In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This morning's Mass is being offered for the intentions of Teresa Talbot. A very warm welcome to all of you in the church and all of you watching online as we gather together to celebrate the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. And as we begin, we invite all our young friends, all our children of school age, to please come forward for their children's liturgy. So now we place ourselves in the presence of God. We thank him for all his blessings this last week and we ask forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that, in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra, the priest, 
brought the law before the assembly, consisting of men, women, and children old enough to understand. This was the first day of the seventh month. On the square, before the water gate, in the presence of the men and women and children old enough to understand, he read from the book from early morning till noon. All the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden dais erected for the purpose, in full view of all the people, since he stood higher than all the people. Ezra opened the book, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people raised their hands and answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and, face to the ground, prostrated themselves before the Lord. And Ezra read from the law of God, translating and giving the sense, so that the people understood what was read. Then, Neremiah, His Excellency, and Ezra, priest and scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, This day is sacred to the Lord your God. Do not be mournful, do not weep. For the people were all in tears as they listened to the words of the law. He then said, Go, eat the fat, drink the sweet wine, and send a portion to the man who has nothing prepared ready. For this day is sacred to our Lord. Do not be sad. The joy of the Lord is your stronghold. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The response is, Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. May the spoken words of my mouth and thoughts of my heart Win favour in your sight, O Lord, my rescuer, my rock. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Just as a human body, though it is made up of many parts, is a single unit Because all these parts, though many, make one body, so it is with Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised, Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens, and one spirit was given to us all to drink. Nor is the body to be identified with any one of its many parts. Now you together are Christ's body, but each of you is a different part of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to greet the gospel. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Seeing that many others have undertaken to draw up accounts of the events that have taken place among us, exactly as these were handed down to us by those who from the outset were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, I in my turn, after carefully going over the whole story from the beginning, have decided to write an ordered account for you, so that your excellency may learn how well founded the teaching is that you have received. Jesus, with the power of the Spirit in him, returned to Galilee, and his reputation spread throughout the countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favour. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel that we've just heard is a rather strange passage because the first little bit is the preamble to Luke's Gospel, its opening, a sort of introduction. And then we fast forward to the fourth chapter and we hear of that occasion when Jesus was in the synagogue reading the scriptures and saying that the text was being fulfilled as they were listening. So it makes us think about scripture and the way that Christ's message is transmitted to us. And it's for that reason that today has been designated the Sunday of the Word of God. So how is the message of Christ transmitted to us? Often we hear of three different ways. It's like a, a stool or a chair with three legs. Firstly, we have tradition. All the things that were handed on to the apostles. Not just things written down, but also unwritten tradition. And these are reflected in things like the practices of the early Christians and the way that they worshipped, the prayers that they used. But some of this tradition was written down and some of it formed part of our scripture, the New Testament, and that has a very special role in our faith. And then the third leg, the third dimension, is the teaching authority of the church down the ages. It reminds us that whenever we open the Bible, we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. We have 2,000 years of teaching and tradition to help us understand it and interpret it. But how do we know that the scriptures are reliable? How do we know that the gospels are trustworthy? Well, we have a clue in our passage today, that opening of St. Luke's gospel, where he writes rather like a rather polished historian of his time. He reassures us that the amazing story he's about to tell is not made up, it's not based on gossip, it's actually the result of a lot of research. He's gone through the story from the very beginning. And it's rather charming to think of Luke going around, speaking to different eyewitnesses and speaking to the apostles themselves and recording all the things that he has heard. So because of his scrupulous research, because of the ordered account that he's passed on to us, we can have secure knowledge about all the things he says. And also, of course, we have the consistency of his text and also its great clarity. That's one of the great things about the Gospels. They're very simple. They don't exaggerate. 
They simply say things as they are. Another thing that makes the Gospels and the books of the New Testament so reliable is that we actually have very early manuscripts of them. You know, when you think of some of the classical authors like Aristotle and Plato, the earliest copies that we have of their works are often many hundreds of years after these writers lived. But for the Gospels, the, one of the earliest copies we have of part of the Gospels is actually in a library in Manchester, and it dates from the second century, so just after perhaps 100 years after these texts were written. So that also helps us um, appreciate their reliability. But of course, the Gospels are not just history books. They're not just like some chronicle of the ancient Roman Empire. They're something much more than that. They are inspired books full of the Holy Spirit, containing a life-giving message. And that's why we honor the Gospels in a very special way. That's why we stand as we listen to them proclaimed in the church. That's why the priest kisses the book and sometimes incenses them. God is the ultimate author of sacred scripture. This doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit literally dictated the words to the authors, but it does mean that every author is inspired by the Spirit and especially is preserved from falling into any serious error concerning spiritual truths. Sometimes the Bible may have discrepancies when it comes to the order of events or some little details, but when it comes to the spiritual truths they're teaching, we know that they are truly inspired. But having said that, each author is fully human, has his own style, his own level of ability, his own purpose in writing. So St. Luke today invites us to have confidence in the good news that he passes down to us. Week by week, we focus this year on his gospel. And as we hear the word of God proclaimed in the church, let's take it back to our homes and our workplaces. Let's meditate upon the words and apply them to our lives. No matter how much we think we know about the Lord and our faith, we can never stop learning about it or digesting it and reflecting on it. Let's truly open our minds and our hearts to the one who was sent to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and to bring new sight to the blind. The words of scripture are not dead words from the past. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. So now we stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In our prayers this week, we pray especially for peace in the Ukraine. We pray this week of prayer for Christian unity, for a greater drawing together of Christians and are working together. We pray for all those who are sick, especially all those with COVID, and also Lucy Sweeney, Polly Conroy, 
Haley Linsky, Michael Angelini, Stephen Hogg, Kat Christine Nardi, Enid Scotland, Shelmy Lewis, Norman Doraval, Bruno Baptista, Sharon Mensah, Donald Reckitt, Bill Broughton, Mary Fernandez, Elaine Balanathan, and Neil. And we pray for all those who've died recently and whose anniversaries are at this time, including Lukey e. Whittle, Michael O'Loughlin, Francesco Lupe Lopez, Anthony Xavier, Rita Shaheen, Sheila Conroy, John Maroney, Bernadette Morrissey, Leo Gorman, May Taslima, Connie Dodd, Pablo Soles Canales, Audrey Skinner, John Ward, Michael Honori Golden, David Wells, Arias Estrada, and Eileen Warfield. And for these and for all our intentions this week, we pray, Lord, hear us. And turning to Mary, our mother, we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
So as always, please stay in your seat until you're invited forward. The body of Christ.
prayer of spiritual communion, especially for those watching at home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us stand and pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Do take a copy of the newsletter home with you, and many thanks as always to our stewards and our choir and our children's liturgy leaders. Now, the headlines are full of reports about the lifting of restrictions, and it might almost give the impression that COVID is kind of over and we can all kind of completely relax. Of course, we all know that COVID is still very much with us, and I certainly know lots of people who are currently self-isolating, and I'm sure you do as well. In fact, one of our parishioners was only recently uh, released from hospital uh, due to COVID. So we still need to be uh, cautious, although we can also be perhaps optimistic about um, the, the next few months. But we're still going to be continuing doing what we've been doing for uh, the last two years. Uh, we still ask you to wear masks and or sanitize hands um, as you come in. The government has said that, uh, especially in crowded indoor spaces where you're mixing with people you don't normally mix with, we do still need to take uh, extra care. Um, and it's not just for our own protection, it's also to make sure that everyone else feels safe. So you could see it as a sort of act of charity. So thank you for your uh, ongoing understanding with this. Monday, as you know, is for me a bit of a history day. I normally go into the diocesan archive where um, I, I work on Mondays. Uh, but from tomorrow, I'm beginning a, a new thing as well. I'm teaching modern history in the seminary, which is uh, located in Chelsea, quite close to the National Army Museum and the, and the Royal Hospital there. Um, so since I need to make that journey, and it's a bit of a walk from the station, Mass is at the slightly earlier time now on Monday uh, at 9 o'clock, and that will remain the same until May when I finish my teaching commitments. Um, but do say a little prayer for me, and if I look blank uh, when I'm speaking to you, especially over the next few weeks, it's because I'm busy preparing all these lectures as well as doing everything else, and at the moment I'm heavily into Napoleon and the Concord out of 1801 and lots of other interesting things, so any questions you have about Napoleon, do come and see me um, at the end of Mass. I hope you all have a good week um, and see you very soon. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ.